This video is brought to you by Technically Not a Technician, and in today's video, we'll see if we can make my bootleg copy of Quake Arcade Tournament Edition play in co op mode. For those of you new to the channel, we've been able to bootleg the short lived but popular arcade version of Quake known as Quake Arcade Tournament Edition, or simply Quake ATE. Watch the video up top if you're curious about the process that I went through to accomplish this goal. As soon as I learned that the arcade version of Quake could be pirated, I set about modifying an arcade one up so that it could run the game. If you would like to see a demonstration of that, please watch the video that is located above. In that video, I show off the single player version, which is almost identical to the PC version. However, the arcade version awards you with in game prizes, and they make the game more challenging by timing out your health bar as you play, requiring you to collect health to counteract the effect. Even though playing alone was entertaining, I think we can all agree that this game was really designed to be enjoyed over a local area network. When the game designers put this into play, I presume that they were attempting to recreate the atmosphere of a LAN party inside the arcades. At this point, I knew I needed to construct two Quake arcade cabinets, which I did, and after that, I produced a brief video of Deathmatch gameplay. If you haven't seen the Deathmatch video yet, you can find it up top, and if you scroll down to the description, you'll also find links to the other videos mentioned as well as this one. In all candor, the first first-person shooter I ever played online was Quake 2, even though I had previously played Wolfenstein 3D and Doom on the PC. If you've played Quake 2, you already know that the only way to access cooperative play is through the use of mods. I am telling you this because when I was configuring Quake ATE to run as a deathmatch, I noticed that co-op play was an option. Additionally, I have discovered that co-op play in arcades is mentioned in some of the online sources that I have discovered. Keeping this in mind, I decided that I wanted to give it a try, and to my knowledge, there is no one else besides myself who has two of these to test it out on. I do have a question for those of you who are watching. Have any of you ever participated in the cooperative match on Quake ATE in the arcade in the early 2000s late 90s? Please let me know about it in the comments. And if anyone watching has ever managed a small fleet of these at an arcade, please tell us about your experience and let us know what we, as a community, may be missing. When I saw the option for co-op play for the first time, I immediately thought that it would be as simple as turning that option on and then beginning a multiplayer game. I'm sorry to have to break the news to you, but it's not quite that simple. I was able to start the game, and some of the options even booted, but whenever I boot into co-op mode, I always end up on the edge, a deathmatch map, rather than any of the other co-op maps. This is very frustrating. If I'm understanding what's happening correctly, the program is starting a cooperative game using the co-op settings, but it isn't loading into the appropriate cooperative map. Because of this, we are unable to play the game in the manner in which it was designed because there are no foes for us to battle nor a way to progress to the next level. My ability to give a demonstration is limited to the edge, which does includes all of the co-op rules in action. What exactly do I mean? That is an excellent inquiry. Although we are currently playing on a deathmatch map, we will not be affected by friendly fire in any way. When we take something from the environment, such as ammunition, armor, or health, it does not respawn. Once more, this leads me to believe that we are playing in cooperative mode. However, something in the settings is preventing the appropriate map from loading. In my opinion, this issue is probably related to the configuration file that is used by default. I have a sneaking suspicion that one of the fixes I've implemented may have rendered that facet of the game inoperable. I also need to confess that this is just a wild guess on my part, and I have no idea if that's actually the case. It's possible that the standalone arcade server software is necessary for cooperative play, but I can't say for sure. I do know that I will continue to experiment with the settings, and if the server software on the arcade is the same as the server software on the PC, then putting together my own server shouldn't be too difficult. With all that said, I want to thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you.